All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. Both McDonald's and Starbucks have officially started accepting China's digital currency, the People's Bank of China's digital yuan, on a trial basis. Now this is in select areas, starting in Xiong, an area southwest of Beijing in the Hebei province, all according to state-backed media reports. Now in the last two years, we've been kind of jerked around involving headlines involving Starbucks and Bitcoin, involving backed and Starbucks and Bitcoin. So in today's video, let's be very clear on what is fact and what is fiction and how much is McDonald's and Starbucks getting into this China's digital yuan. Again, this is all according to state-backed media reports. So if you happen to be in China or you have a friend or a family member that's in China right now that you can call and confirm or deny, comment down below. Let's all check the comment section together. And it's not just McDonald's, it's McDonald's and Starbucks and Subway are the three American companies among a total of 19 companies participating in this trial. In general, this is a huge step forward for the People's Bank of China. The country's central bank has been developing this digital currency for the past few years, and now we're finally getting some implementation, trial-wise. Now, the purpose of this digital yuan is, according to the People's Bank of China, making digital payments easier and faster. Of course, yes, this is a natural evolution of money, but also it's a way for the Chinese government to track every transaction of its people, and also as a way to make it easier for the world to start using their currency, China's currency, and increase their dominance over the US dollar, over other non-digital currencies of the world. And they're starting in Xiong. Xiong is a special district about 86 miles southwest of Beijing, and this whole evolution is actually President Xi Jinping's personal project for building a new economic center. So this is meant to boost the economy. Also, Xi emphasized in a speech on Thursday that the country would step up development of 5G, artificial intelligence, and other technologies at a massive scale known as new infrastructure. And this trial with McDonald's, Subway, Starbucks, this is the digital currency part of this new infrastructure. Now, we do have major news involving Binance, involving Facebook's Libra, as well as a major update the SEC has taken down another altcoin. But like always, just to bring this home, the major reason that many analysts and reports are coming out and saying that the People's Bank of China is pushing this now is because of the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. Further tests will be done in Shenzhen and Chengdu ahead of the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, the People's Bank of China said, according to a state-backed Xinhua News report on April 17th. So that's about two years to make sure all this works swimmingly. But right now, the People's Bank of China are making it very clear that the digital currency has not officially launched yet. These are just trials. You let me know what you think down below in the comments. Next piece of news, the SEC files fraud charges against Drophill, a 2017-2018 ICO that raised over $1.8 million. This news just came out. This channel informed you first, but the Securities and Exchange Commission today filed charges against Drop Hill Hink and its founders, Patrick, Jeremy, and Zachary, in a federal California case for allegedly defrauding investors and hosting an unregistered initial coin offering. So what exactly did Drop Hill do wrong? And by the way, their token, the drop, it's now trading at thousandths of a penny, didn't really have that much farther to drop than where it was a month ago or two months ago. But either way, it's now almost a thousandth ranked uh, in terms of market cap. And in a press release, the SEC said Drop Hill Inc. sold its cryptocurrency, known as Drop Tokens, between January and March of 2018. Maybe you bought some. Let us know in the comments. And they raised more than $1.8 million from investors. Now, the problem was... The SEC's complaints alleged that Drop Hill and its founders informed participants that their money would be pooled together by a trading bot known as DEX, and that the funds that they acquired, the $1.8 million, would be combined to trade assorted digital currencies using a Drop Hill designed algorithm. Now already that smells like a scam, because if they had this winning algorithm, why wouldn't they just make all that money on their own? Why would they need other people's money? But either way, according to the SEC, however, none of that even happened. The commission claimed that despite telling participants, maybe you, 
that they would receive profits every 15 days, Drophill diverted investor funds to the founders' personal bank accounts and other projects. In the meantime, the company allegedly created false reporting statements to cover its tracks while paying DEX users with drop tokens, so a Ponzi scheme, essentially. One of the final quotes from the SEC said in court documents that there is no record of DEX, which Drophill promoted as a differentiating feature of drops, ever operated or ever generated any trading profits. So clear scam. Thank God the SEC goes after these fraudulent bad actors in the space. And again, right now we're watching them go after the low-hanging fruit, so to speak, of the 2017-2018 altcoins as they slowly build up their Rolodex and go after more and more of these projects. Crazy times. And next piece of news involving Facebook's Libra. By the way, like the video, but Facebook's Calibra team outlines a new Byzantine fault tolerance testing method. So Facebook's Libra is very much pushing their efforts forward, probably to try and beat China and beat these other countries to the punch. Now, if you've ever heard the term Byzantine fault tolerance, Cardano is big on this, cryptocurrencies in general work to solve this, but the Byzantine fault tolerance is this. BFT is a concept drawn from a 1982 academic paper and the metaphor describes a situation in which a group of Byzantine generals and their forces surround a castle and prepare to attack. To be successful, all parties must attack simultaneously. However, they are aware of a traitor among them, making it difficult for the forces to act in unison. Now, how does this relate to blockchain? Well, in the context of a blockchain, the metaphor refers to the challenge for a network in seeking to coordinate amid the threat of malicious actors seeking to cause disruptions by transmitting false or inaccurate data. Now, it should be noted that Bitcoin, BTC, achieves Byzantine fault tolerance through its proof-of-work mining algorithm. And with Bitcoin, if you're even briefly trying to exert a small influence on the network, that necessitates enormous resource investment to do so. So Bitcoin has it, Libra's trying for it, testing for it. I'll keep you updated. Next piece of news, Binance sees a 2000% employee increase in under three years. Now this is interesting when you put this against the headline from a few days ago, Ethereum incubator consensus, which is run by Joe Lubin, one of the founders of Ethereum, is laying off even more people. Now, Ethereum's consensus, just like a lot of crypto companies, laid off a ton of people in the 2018 bear market. But Ethereum's consensus continues. The numbers indicate that consensus may have begun this year with just under 850 employees, and they now retain just over 550. So as of a few days ago, the Brooklyn, New York-based firm, Consensus, known for incubating Ethereum projects, is cutting just over 90 people, a spokesperson confirmed. So Ethereum is very much in defensive mode still right now, while Binance, they say they're, they're even asking for more people. Binance recently broke the 1,000 employee mark, showing tremendous growth since its ICO. And in a direct quote from Binance co-founder Yihi, when Binance first started in 2017, there was under 50 people. Now we have more than 1,000 employees today, currently at 1,002 and counting, and we are welcoming new hires almost every day. So Binance is expanding while Ethereum is contracting. Now, in my opinion, Binance's BNB coin is eventually going to be one of the altcoins that the SEC definitely goes for as an unregistered security. Now, time will tell, and I'm not saying that Binance defrauded investors so much as drop hill. All I'm saying is why did Binance Exchange need a token when Kraken and Coinbase did uh, exchanges throughout history have done fine without a token? And how did Binance Exchange not benefit greatly from crowdfunding the world to invest in their exchange? How did this not give them an unfair advantage compared to Coinbase and other exchanges like them? Hey, time will tell. As a smart investor, these are just sort of the things you should be considering. And next piece of news, the Bitcoin car wins a virtual NASCAR race. So here's a picture of the winning shot right here. This is real. This was against real NASCAR players, but this was virtual. So not the real thing, but still pretty cool. This was by a guy named Cook, who is a digital marketer who designed the digital skin for his vehicle himself. And while a crowd were quarantined in their homes, locked up, Brian Cook, the digital marketer from North Carolina, beat 
other NASCAR gods like Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Busch, and others in this virtual iRace. So just some great visibility for Bitcoin. That is the video for today. Like the video. My name's Austin. See you tomorrow.